In this video, I'm going to quickly talk about some accessories for the PlayStation 5. We're going to do the official PlayStation 5 accessory review, and we're going to talk about some extra accessories on top of this. So this is the main accessory line. We also have a webcam, which I don't have, and I don't think I'll ever need it. So that's why I don't have it. The ones that I mainly use every single day out of all of these would be like the face plates and also the internal storage. Yes, it's an accessory and you can't see it because it's actually inside the PlayStation 5. It's just stuff that I use every single day. So I love the camo collection. It is my favorite like faceplate of them all. 100% for customization, it is so worth buying because I love the look of it and it looks absolutely amazing. So that's my review of the faceplates. Are they worth buying? For stylizing and just like showing how cool the PlayStation 5 looks, it is so worth it and I really recommend buying the face plates. In terms of other things I use every single day, so I have, we have the DualSense controller, but the camo collection version, it is so good. I've got another controller here. I've got the blue controller and we have these pads on top. They're not like an official, you know, PlayStation 5 certified thing, but these, these extra joystick pads are really, really cool. I don't know if I use them every single day, like basing it off just what I use every single day, I actually don't use them. It's an okay accessory. It's just not something that I use all the time, but they're really cool nonetheless. Pulse 3D headset, let's talk about it. So actually I'm not using it as much as what I would love to be able to use. So because it has the 3D audio effect, it is pretty cool reasonably quite comfortable like the pads do feel it feels quite hard actually it doesn't feel as soft as what you would think because it's quite hot I actually feel uncomfortable wearing these so I actually use these different speakers I use these Logitech uh, light sync speakers at the moment and they're really really good and they sort of have this like lighting effect that goes on so I actually prefer those as my accessory for sort of audio more than headphones I do like the Pulse 3D headset, but I'm just not using it as much as what I would love to use it. And that's my honest opinion. In terms of the media remote, I'm not actually using it like almost at all, to be honest. So is it worthwhile buying it? It's definitely not a necessity. I definitely like how it has the shortcuts and stuff like that, but I don't need it because I've got the TV downstairs and stuff like that. So if you don't have like a smart TV or if you don't have like a any TV, that has like the access to Netflix and stuff like that. I see where that comes from, but I don't use a PlayStation 5 for like that sort of media engine, if that makes sense. I use it for just playing games. So having it as a media remote, I just don't see it as a daily driver. And that's just an honest opinion. That's just how it is. Now let's talk about some other accessories. So we've got the DualSense Dual Charger which is very, very good. Like it'll charge two devices at once, which is really good. But I just think there's better third party charges. So for example, we've got the third F1 and then I've got the stealth one. So 100%, I've talked about it before, the stealth charger is so much better than this dual charger. Now these do charge via USB type C. So instead of having them down with the proper connection, we charge them at the top like this. But basically, they just stick in like that, and you charge them like that, and let's plug it in. Now, here's a useful cable that I got in this pack. I believe this is actually like the stealth cable, but it's a really nice braid cable. It's USB Type-C connected, so we just plug that in. And because this is three meters, it's a really, really useful cable. You can stick that in the back of your PlayStation 5, or you can put it somewhere else. I really like it because not only does it have the LED lights, but it has the LED indicator right there. So that actually tells you the charge of the controller. So right there, it's blue. So that means that it is a fully charged controller. If it's red, that means that it's not fully charged. And that's why I like it so much. It's like $30 and it does the job better than the dual charger because this has no indication of your charge. This has an indication of your charge and it has LED lights and it looks pretty sick. So, you know what? My favorite charger is the Stealth. Like I said before, I love the three meter braid cables. They're really good for like any gaming accessory setup, even PC setups, even Xbox setups. They're fantastic. In terms of the Backbone One, honestly, 
for like gaming, I've used it probably once or twice. It is quite useful. So let's say for example, you're in bed and you want to download a game to your PlayStation 5. It's fantastic for that. Like actually controlling your PlayStation 5 on the go. You can actually use like the PlayStation 5 app just like by itself to download games. But it's just so useful actually having like the D-pad there. And it's a really, really nice controller. I do have to say that much. I'm not using it like as much as how I would want to use it because when you're doing remote play, it's kind of like you're streaming from the PlayStation 5 or you're streaming from the Xbox. So it's not showing it in true motion. It sort of does a bit of lagging sometimes and stuff like that. It's based on your internet connection. So you're basically streaming from your PlayStation 5 using the internet to your phone. So that's all based on the internet. You know, I would like to use it more, but it's not like my favorite accessory out of all of them. This Astro headset. So the Astro A10, really affordable, really nice, really durable. It looks sick. I'm just not using it as much as like, honestly, what I thought I would be. Obviously, because I've got the Pulse 3D headset, I wouldn't be using this, but I thought I'd give it a really good go in a review and my thoughts and feelings about it. It is a wide gaming headset, so that means that I could use it for almost all of my gaming devices, such as the Nintendo Switch or the Xbox, but I'm just not using it, to be honest. It is quite good. It's definitely more comfortable than the Pulse 3D headset, and this is like an $80 headset, so that's what I love about it. The padding is really, really nice. Overall, really good headset. If you need something really cheap and you can't afford the Pulse 3D headset, I would go for something like these but I'm just not using them because I'm not really much of a headphone guy anymore. I'm more of like the speaker kind of guy. Yeah, that's my thoughts and feelings on this. In terms of these playing cards, honestly, I've never touched them since unboxing them, but they're still pretty cool. I definitely like them. So let's go to the PlayStation logo, and then like, those are some of the playing cards. Yeah, honestly, I've not used them yet, but maybe you're good for like, like a card game or something like that when you're on holiday. It's just a nice thing to have, but it's definitely not something that I'm like using every single day. So it's an okay accessory. In terms of the WD Black, I actually use this all the time. Surprisingly so. So what you can do is have internal hard drive and an external hard drive used at the same time. So what I can do is copy games onto this that I'm not using and using it as external storage. And then I can have the internal storage to really store the games that I'm really playing on. And then having the PlayStation storage as sort of like a mid ground to download onto the disc and then transfer across to the two. I'm kind of using this for like, you know, just some games that I'm just not playing and I just need to store them. So it's actually really useful to have. In terms of the PlayStation Lite, you know how much I love this. Really do like it. And this one is micro. So you just press the button on the side it lights up and we've got three different settings. We've got the main setting, we've got this sort of fading setting, if you can actually see it, and then we've got the flashy setting. Ooh, cool man. I really like it. It's just more of like a, like a background piece. And you know what? I wish I used this more, but like it's so simple and I actually really do like it. So I'm gonna keep that lit up in the background right there. I really like it, man. Like it just adds, something extra to the space. In terms of the actual USB hub that I bought, it's a really, really cool accessory. So it has like the four kill switches and you can add like extra accessories to your PlayStation, your Xbox, or other devices such as a PC. It is really good. It needs a longer cable. I'm not using it honestly like as much as like what I thought it would be, but it's such like a great idea. I'm just not finding the use for it, honestly. In terms of the Power A official sort of PlayStation 5 cable where it can play 8K at 120 frames per second, not really using it that much. I'm just using all the basic sort of HDMI cables, but it is such a great upgrade because if they break, this one, I know for a fact, will not break because it is so powerful and thick. So powerful and thick. Wow, what a description. Definitely be keeping this one though. Like it's, it seems like such a necessity of a cable to get. I love my good cables, so. And there's like other cables that do the exact same thing. This one is just one of them. And you can also get like really nice thick cables that actually charge your controllers as well. And they come in three meter length as well. That's why these cables are really good because they're really long. 
So you can get one for the PlayStation controller and you can get one for HDMI. So they're really good to get. Now there's a few more extra stuff such as the Logitech G29 racing wheel. So is this worth actually buying? For racing games, I can see why. I'm not actually using it like every single day because I don't play racing games every single day. But when I do play racing game, like Gran Turismo or something like that, I probably will go to this wheel for playing those. Um, the wheel is quite small, I do have to say, in terms of the size, like, but man, like they're so well built and they've got these foot pedals that are really cool as well. That it just feel like super real. So we got like the clutch, we've got the brake and then the acceleration. I really like it and it's really nicely built. So we have the Logitech G29 and the G39 right now as well, which is double the price. Honestly, if you're just gonna play it sort of sporadically, you're not very serious about the racing game, so you're just gonna go for like the G29 for the base minimum. It's the cheapest and it's really, really fun and really good. Connecting it to the PlayStation 5 is quite easy. It just connects via USB and yeah, you can start just playing straight away. It's really fun. It's actually really cool. It has like all the PlayStation buttons in there. Yes, it is great. Those are all of my PlayStation 5 accessories. Coming back to it, the ones that I use almost every single day would be like the face plates, internal and external storage, my DualSense controller, and the stealth charger, and the extended USB cables. Those are like the main ones. And what else is there? Sort of like, you know, you can just use it whenever you want. But yeah, that's my thoughts and feelings and all the PlayStation 5 accessories and which ones are actually worth buying. So thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it helps. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you guys next time.